Hi guys, in this video, let's tackle about the different laws of exponent. But before that, let's try to recall these first. Now let's recall that when we are multiplying a number by itself, say for example 2 times 2 times 2, we can rewrite this as 2 to the power of 3 or 2 cubed, wherein 2 here is called the base while the 3 here is called the exponent. Now this is the first law of exponent. It states that when a base a is raised to a power m or a particular number m, so we will just be writing this as a times a times a, wherein m depicts the number of times wherein you are going to multiply the base by itself. So for example, 2 cubed, that is, we can write this as 2 times 2 times 2, so that is equal to 8. So 2 is the base here, and then 3, it depicts how many times you are going to multiply the base by itself. Another example, 5 to the power of 5. So 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. So 5 is the base, and then 5 is the power or the exponent, and this depicts how many times you are going to multiply 5 by itself. So 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 times 5. So I heard we are multiplying 5 here 5 times since 5 is the exponent. So 5 to the power of 5 is equal to 3125. So again, the first law simply states that if a base A is raised to a particular number, say for instance M, so you are just going to multiply the base A by itself depending on the number of or depending on depending on the exponent or the power. So that's just it. That is just the first law of exponent. Now let's proceed to the second law of exponent. This is also called as the product of a power. Now we have here a to the power of m times a to the power of n that is equal to a to the power of m plus n. So in other words, if you have a base uh, a base with the same variables, say for instance a and a, so these two variables are the same, but they have different exponents, and if you're gonna multiply them, you will just have to add their exponents. So for example, x cubed times x to the power of 5, so you will simply copy the variable x, and then add their exponents. So 3 plus 5, that is equal to 8. Another 6 to the power of 2 or 6 squared times 6 to the power of 7. So that is equal to copy the base 6 and then add their exponent. So 2 plus 7, that is equal to 6 to the power of 9. So if we're going to evaluate this, this will be equal to 10,077,696. So that is the second law of exponent. Again, you will just be simply copying the base and then add their exponent. So you have to take note that their base should be the same. That is the only time that you can add their exponents if their, base, if their bases are the same. Now let's proceed to the third law of exponent, which is the power of powers. So for instance, we have here a to the power of m, and then we enclose this inside a parenthesis, and then it is raised to a power n. So all you have to do is to multiply the exponent of the base and the power. So m times n that is equal to Mn. So let's take a look in this given example. So for example, c to the power of 5, and then that is raised to 2, or c to the power of 5 squared. So all you have to do is to copy the base and then simply multiply their exponents. So 5 times 2, that is equal to 10. So therefore, c to the power of 5 raised to the power of 2 is equal to c to the power of 10. Another example, x squared raised to the power of 3. So we'll simply copy x and then we'll simply multiply 2 times 3, which is 6. So x squared time, uh, to the power of 3 or x squared cubed is equal to x to the power of 6. Now let's proceed to the fourth law of exponent. This is also called as the quotient of a power. Now, if you are going to divide two variables or you are going to divide, say for example, a variable, with the same base but different exponents. So all you have to do is to copy the base and then subtract their exponents. So let's try this example. For example, a to the power of 8 over or divided by a to the power of 5. So you will simply copy the base a and then subtract their exponents. So 8 
the exponent of the numerator minus the exponent of the denominator, which is 5. So 8 minus 5, that is 3. So the answer is a cube. Now, how about this? x to the power of 9 over or divided by x squared. So we will simply copy their variable x and then, or the base x, and then we will subtract their exponent. So 9 minus 2, that is equal to 7. So therefore, x to the power of 9 over x squared is equal to x to the power of 7. Now let's proceed to the fifth law of exponent, which is also called as the law of zero exponent. Now, now according to this law, if the exponent of a variable or a base is equal to zero, we're in the base is not equal to zero, so the answer is equal to one. So example, x to the power of zero, that is just equal to one. So automatically, this is equal to one, as long as the exponent is zero and the variable is not also equal to zero. How about this? 18 to the power of zero is equal to one. So we will simply equate this to one. Any number except zero raised to the power of zero is equal to 1. Now let's proceed to the sixth law of exponent, which is also called as the law for negative exponent. So for example, we have here, or this law states that if a base is raised to a negative exponent, so we will transform this into this. So the numerator will automatically be equal to 1, and then we will put this term or this variable into the denominator and the exponent will now become positive. So let's try this example. So for example, x to the power of negative 4. So automatically we will write 1 at the numerator and then copy the term and then we will change the sign of the exponent into positive. So that becomes 1 over x to the power of 4. How about this? 5 to the power of negative 2. So again, if the Exponent is negative, so automatically the numerator will become 1, and then we will uh, divide it by the term. So 5, and then let's change this into positive, so 5 squared. So that is equal to 1 over 25, because 5 squared is equal to 5 times 5, which is 25. So those are the different laws of exponents that you have to be familiar with, because you are going to use this as you take your subjects or advanced mathematics subjects in the next year level or even in college. Now let's try to answer this. Let's simplify each of the following. Now number one, x to the power of 5 raised to negative 2 over x cubed or quantity x to the power of 5 raised to the power of negative 2 over x cubed. So solution, we will simply, since this is a uh, power by power, so we will simply multiply this. So we will simply copy the base x, and then we will multiply 5 by negative 2, and then copy the denominator. So 5 times negative 2, that is equal to negative 10 over x cubed, or x to the power of negative 10 over x cubed. So that is equal to, so since this is a uh, quotient, or we're, we're going to apply the quotient rule, so the exponent of the numerator, the, the exponent of the base of the numerator, divide uh, minus the exponent of the of the denominator. So that is negative 10 minus 3. So x to the power of negative 10 minus 3, that is equal to x to the power of negative 13. So you have also to recall the rules in subtracting and adding in features. So that's the reason why it becomes negative 13, because uh, negative 10 minus 3 is equal to negative 13. And since this is a negative exponent, so automatically the numerator will become 1 and then we will transfer this at the denominator. And then we are going to change its sign from, pos uh, from negative to positive. So our final answer would be 1 to the power of 1 over x to the power of 13. Now second activity. Let's try to simplify this or second problem. Let's try to simplify simplify this um, quantity 3a b to the power of 6 and then raised to the power of 3 over 3a cubed b squared. So solution, first we are going to simplify the numerator. So this becomes 3 and then we are going to distribute this 3 to each of the variable or each of yes the coefficient in this given term. So this will become 3. So it is expected that if 
a certain number or a certain variable has no uh, explied or explicit exponents. So for example, three, there is no exponent here. So it is understood that its exponent is equal to one. So one times three, that is simply three. That's why it becomes three cubed. And then a, that is again one, its exponent is one and times three, that is equal to a cubed. So we multiply them because again, according to the power, um, according to the power of power of a power, Power of powers, that is the rule which has been discussed a while ago. So we are going to multiply them directly. So a cube and then b6 times 3, that is 18. So 3 cube, a cube, b to the power of 18. Because 6 times 3 is 18 over 3 a, a cube, b squared. Now, from here, we're going to simplify this. So since these two are the same so 3 is the same as 3 so we're gonna subtract their exponents so the exponent of 3 here is 3 so 3 and the exponent of 3 here is 1 so 3 minus 1 and then um, a cubed minus 3 so that is a cubed minus 3 and then b to the power of 18 minus 2 so this is the the rule or the law under the quotient of a power so you have to uh, recall that and then let's try to simplify this so this becomes 3 minus 1, that is 2, so this becomes 3 squared. And then 3 minus 3, that is 0, so this is this becomes a to the power of 0. And then b16, uh, b18 to the power of, uh, I mean b to the power of 18 minus 2, this becomes 16. So b to the power of 16. Now, 3 squared, that is equal to 9. And then a to the power of 0 again, any number except for 0 raised to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So that that's why a to the power of 0 becomes 1 here. And then let's copy b to the power of 16. Now, 9 times 1 times b to the power of 16, that is just equal to 9b to the power of 16. And this is now our final answer. So that's just it. That is just how to simplify terms and polynomial expressions using the different laws of exponents. So I will be giving more sample problems related to the different laws of exponents on, in the next days to come. So just keep posted. So I will be uploading more sample problems related to this. But for now, this is just what I'm going to share to you. I hope that you have, you have learned something from this and I hope that you have learned the different laws of exponent. So that's all for now. Thank you. More power and let's keep learning.